All right, everyone, welcome to the first map of Scarlet Hawks B versus McPherson College. Um, this will be the first map of a best of five series. Uh, and let's just get right into it. All right, so it looks like we're going to start off on Oasis University here. From first looks, it looks like both teams are be, are going to be going for the Reinhardt composition, uh, while uh, Scarlet Hawks B is going to be going for a more meta-aligned composition. So they're going to be running the Ryan Diva. Uh, they're going to be running the Reaper and the Ash. Ash character you don't really see a lot in this meta. Um, meanwhile, McPherson seems to be going for the Ryan Zarya, which is a little different from the usual meta, but their DPS are in line with what is commonly run with the May and McCree. Scarlet Hawks be gonna go on the left room over here. It looks like gonna take control of point first while McPherson Bulldogs gonna go for the high ground. Frickinator is going to end up taking uh, taking out Love and now Scarlet Hawks be down a little bit of damage. Uh, McPherson gonna drop down and drop the wall on the on uh, Scarlet Hawks B Ryan and just take him out. And from that point, McPherson can just start picking off people one by one. Looks like Tekka Killer is going to end up escaping on the Ana. Love needs to be really careful about peeking here for too long without a tank, otherwise he can get staggered off. But Staple does come to end up saving him. Scarlet Hawks be coming, uh, doing a regroup right now. Uh, Agum seems to have teleported somewhere, but I'm not entirely sure where. Love gonna get taken out really quickly because he took a little bit of a cheeky peek. That's gonna be that's gonna waste a lot of time on the Scarlet Hawks B side. Not gonna have to wait for that. They're still gonna end up trying to fight this with one person down. I don't necessarily agree with that choice. They probably should have waited to, for Love to come back, even though they knew that it would take some time. And again, Love come back. He takes. I'm not sure what was going on there. He might have peeked a little too much and on taken out. That's going to be another stagger. Scarlet Hawks B just need to regroup full and they cannot stagger anymore. Otherwise, it's going to be problematic for them. Love throwing out the dynamite. Doesn't seem like he got anybody with that. Zarya is on the left. Let's see if anyone recognizes that. It looks like they don't. There's no B to help out with this. They were so close with the B, but they didn't have it quite just yet. McPherson going to commit two ults into this fight, and they still have three in the bank. But it's looking pretty well for Scarlet Hawks B on the ultimate side, considering that they almost have six available. Hopefully, they'll be trying to get some space early on, maybe using the Diva Bomb to do so, and then trying to, you know, uh, commit to this fight with a with a shatter. But it looks like they'll use Nano first. And they need to keep Staple alive. Frickinator ends up killing himself somehow. Good bomb from Viridian there, but they did not need to use the Death Blossom. The Death Blossom could have been saved, especially for this upcoming fight, as they'll need some ultimates to try to end the fight early on. They only have Shatter to do that now. Bob can at least slow the fight. McPherson coming in here with the beat and the Blizzard. The Blizzard is very good for taking out the fight. Viridian needs to look to eat this ultimate. He looks like he tries to, but he just barely misses it. McPherson committing both the beat and the blizzard there, while IIT only committing Bob until just the very uh, NB until just the very end where they try to shatter but it does get shut down. Loveless taking out Creative MBW just at the very end there with the high noon. That was another ult committed. Now both neither team has any ults, but this is looking very risky for Scarlet Hawksby as they are not able to contest. And it looks like the first round will go to the side of McPherson Bulldogs. Yeah, I Scarlet Hawksby just needs to be very careful about not committing uh too many ults at once but they also just need to be very careful about the stagger whenever they see that stagger they just need to not take any uh fight damage whatsoever they need not to be poking they just need to regroup as six fully on and then just go with that if they keep staggering like that they're gonna keep uh end up wasting a lot of time which matters a lot in a game mode like uh what do you call it control where it matters so much on how much you uh are able to rack up the percentage 
All right, Scarlet Hawksby looks like they're coming up with the dive this time. The monkey ball dive looks like they won't be running a diva. Uh, they do not have any dive DPS to pair with this though, so let's see how this goes. McPherson Bulldogs coming with a more meta composition, except they're electing to run the ashes out of the Kree. Skull Queen taking out Adam really early on on there, but Frickinator again uh, ends up killing himself, so it is even now. The D tech killer does demech the diva, but the Rhine takes uh the Rhine from first in, in exchange takes out love. There's a lot of trades going on here, still even more. Now this really depends on how well the Scarlet Hog B tanks are able to focus down targets. It looks like they're a little split. One is going for the Rhine and the other is going for the Lucio. They need to be a little more coordinated on that. It's the Rhine and the May now, but the May coming back is a big issue because she can just stall out until the rest of her team comes while Scarlet Hawks A only has one or two on point. Scarlet Hawks is really committing on trying to stop this and in the end is going to go to the side of McPherson Bulldogs. Now Scarlet Hawks are going to need to regroup here and go out for the dive. If they need to run this, they need to find the targets and commit together. If they do not commit together, this is just going to be a mess rather than an actual dive. It does look like uh, what, uh, Viridian is going to take the high ground. He drops the bubble a little early. He does not. He now does not have that for the commit. Although he will use the primal here, but he's going to get frozen right away by Frickinator. The shatter gets committed here, and it ends up getting. It ends up knocking down three people, but it does not get any kills. The Reinhardt putting on a little show and trying to take down those uh those mines there. Staple uh zoning out the staircase there, but he's spending too much time on this ash and not in the fight. And because of that, uh, Scarlet Hawks B ends up getting taken down. The Scarlet Hawks B do not have any alts here. They do have a few coming up, but they do not have any. It looks like they're going to swap to the Ryan Zarya, trying to trying to mirror that brawly playstyle. McPherson Bulldogs, on the other hand, they have four alts coming up, and one of which is a Blizzard, which is very devastating in this in this meta. They also have the bomb too. Uh, they have a lot of alts coming up. The Blizzard is going to come out here. It's going to get the Reinhardt, and it's going to get the Lucio. They commit the bomb too. And then the bomb ends up getting two. I'm not sure why we committed, uh, why Scarlet Hawks B committed the Death Blossom there. They should have just given up on that fight and lost it and tried to use the Death Blossom to retake the next fight, especially because they knew they have a B, and so we could have at least used it to draw out the B. Scarlet Hawks B going to recontest here now with the only two alts they have being the High Noon and the Nano. All right, they're going to commit over here. Bubble used a little early on. The Bob was used. It was a good sleep on the end, and a tech killer, but it does get woken up. Good B from Creative MBW. The Nano comes out in the middle of the fight when the team is distracted, so it's just able to take out Frickinator. Looks like this fight is going to go to the side of Scarlet Hawks B. The only person left is the Ash. Are they going to commit to chase it? They should, but... It looks like the Ash is going to get to get away. Scarlet Hawks, we really need to full commit on that Ash while leaving someone on point. But it is fine because they end up taking the point. They do have a Shatter uh, to, uh, to start this fight while the McPherson Bulldogs have no ultimates. The only one that they are close to approaching is Coalescence and Shatter. Ridden out here a little too far. He uses Shatter, but he does not get anybody. But Love and Staple coming out big, taking out the main tank and the Ash. That's a lot of damage gone. Now the Lucio is gone too. Both supports are out. And looks like this fight will go to the side of Scarlet Hawks B. Now let's see. Scarlet Hawks B, they're going to decide to hold on point. Not sure how I feel about this. They might want to be holding closer towards choke just so that they could build that energy before the fight starts but it seems like they're going to stay on point let's see how that will work out for them love going on the high ground good angle from him he can just keep spamming damage safely the coalescence comes out they really need to keep scarlet hawks we really need to keep the reinhardt light but the shatter comes out and go oh, exorcist eats the grab oh that's devastating for scarlet hawks b they could have used that to keep this fight keep this fight in their favor there's a lot of trades going on but Viridian is going to get taken out, and that's going to put things in the favor of, of McPherson Bulldogs. Stable taken out by the Diva Bomb. Now, the Lucio taken out too, and there goes both supports. Scarlet Hawks B, it looks like they will lose that fight. They might have, they might be able to touch, but 
the wall comes out and stops the touch. And McPherson Bulldogs are going to take this first fight, or this first point. All right, everyone. So we are now on map two of Scarlet Hawks B versus McPherson Bulldogs. This map will be Dorado. Let's get right into it. All right, looking at the compositions here, it looks like Scarlet Hawks B will go for the Ryan Zarya. Uh, and looks like in front of the tank line, McPherson will also uh, mirror the tank line. Scarlet Hawks going for a little bit of a uh, of a DPS line that strays from the meta, they're going for the Hanzo, Junkrat, both which are more comfort picks for uh, Agam and Love, respectively. And Scarlet Hawk's going for the Ana Lucio, compared to the Moira Lucio, uh, one that has Scarlet Hawk's run, deciding to go for the uh, better utility and for the more burst healing, while looks like McPherson going for the greater sustain. Scarlet Hawk is going to start off on this defense. Looks like they're going to try to stay on the high ground. Looks like they're spamming damage here. The Reinhardt uh, looks like he's trapped in the corner. Oh no, he's actually just staying in the corner there. They're going to stay in this corner for as long as possible while the cart moves. And now they're going to end up peeking. McPherson not using the cart for cover that much. Scarlet Hawk's dropping really early, uh, but it looks like it, Love is able to find a kill before they end up getting punished for it, which is really good. But in the end, we're going to get taken out by the May. The May wall comes out from McPherson, but it does not find anybody. Staple has to hold the front line here. It looks like McPherson is going to start pushing through. An anti comes out, and it gets one, but doesn't really isn't really being able to commit on Agam getting taken out, and then uh, the Lucio going to end up fighting Love. This fight ends up going in the favor of McPherson, and it looks like they're just going to take this first fight. McPherson has been able to build a few ults. They're going to have oh, about four ults. The only one that they have fully built is the Coalescence. It looks like Scarlet Hawks is going to switch to the Ryan Diva, uh, and like, I guess they gave up the ultimate charge on the grab. They might not have been, had enough to warrant trying to combo the grab dragon, but they will have a tire here. They could try to start this fight early uh, with the tire, and it looks like they will do that. The tire is going to end up taking both supports. IIT can commit onto this, but IIT has also lost a support uh, in exchange too. The Diva is going to commit to the back. But it looks like she was, she's going to get taken out by the McCree. Um, now Scarlet Hawks has to give up this fight. They're going to start pulling back and regrouping. They have the sh they have the dragon for this next fight, along with both support ults and the shatter. But McPherson is coming with a lot of ults themselves too. They have the Blizzard, which is pretty devastating. Staples going to have to try to look to eat it. 
uh, but we do have the beat for it. Stable gun taken out, and the dragon comes out and takes out three people. McPherson only taking out two with their high noon beloved coming in clutch, getting four kills to turn this fight in their favor. Even though Scarlet Hawks beat lost their main tank and lost two people to the high noon, Love is able to turn it back with a dragon and a few good shots. Now, Scarlet Hawks B uh, committed a few ults there, but it turns out in their favor really well. They still held on to the Shatter, and they have a Nano here. They also have the Bomb coming up. They should be looking to start uh, to either combo the Shatter with the Nano or start this fight, but Viridian getting way too... Uh, extending way too far there and getting walled off really easily the diva not really supporting well looks like Scarlet hawks are going to need to give up a lot of space considering they've lost their tanks but they elect to stay too close i'm not sure how i feel about that play Scarlet hawks kind of need to just give up space once they saw once they saw their tanks but it was a lost fight anyway mcpherson was likely going to take the point uh so all they really did was uh, what do you call it? Save the uh, give up a few lives. The tank's gonna start contesting here, which isn't too bad. Uh, first thing, gonna push up with this wall, but the nade from Tekka Killer is big, is able to keep them alive. The shatter comes out, and the grab gets eaten by Staple. That was a great de defense matrix from Staple. The bomb comes out now after the beat and ends up taking the Zarya. The fight is currently in the favor of Scarlet Hawks. Staple eats another ult. He he is just devouring ultimates. Mech does get taken out by the High Noon, but he's already provided insane amounts of value. The shatter coming out from McPherson and taking over over this fight uh, and taking this fight over for them but Viridian does come with the uh, monkey and holds the point for love to use the dragon and take out three people shifting the fight back in the favor of Scarlet Hawks and they are now winning this they are able to hold Scarlet Hawks looks like they're switching to dive now it was to touch at first but it looks like they're going to be staying to to commit to it now that they're already on it they don't want to waste the time going back Looks like they're staging on high ground to see the Reinhardt takes a lot of damage from love They have the nano the tire and the B here Scarlet Hawks should be looking to tire early this fight considering that uh, McPherson does not have the uh, Beat but it looks like McPherson going to start off with the coalescence because they were intimidated by the monkey But it finds very little value McPherson gonna try to push the car here Viridian Providing that cleave damage and builds the uh, builds the primal, but Agnum tries to tire. He tries to tire in a, a little too late and ends up getting the tire destroyed. The noon comes out from McPherson. Creator MBW tries to beat, but she beat it way too in the open and gets punished for it. Stable gonna pile drive in just to keep the the uh, what do you call it cart contested for as long as possible but it looks like McPherson is going to win this fight IIT has a lot of response here so they could fight this again before it gets captured a big nade comes out from uh, from Tekka Killer but it does get bubble right away the beat comes out and now there's no beat for this fight on the side of McPherson the grab comes comes out but there's no beat from the side of, of Scarlet Hawks here comes the Nano the Nano goes on to love interesting choice but let's see what he can do with it Adam takes out the Moira now that is a lot of their healing gone it looks like not a lot is accomplished with the Nano but it does not matter because Scarlet Hawks are able to take this point It looks like they're going to stay on high ground again. Scarlet Hawks has the minds. This should be able to uh, dictate the pace of the fight in the in uh, in the favor of Scarlet Hawks if they use these minds correctly. They also have Beat and Tire coming up, both very big and important ultimates. But on the side of uh, what do you call it? On the side of McPherson, they have the Blizzard, but there's no Diva to eat it. The Blizzard comes out, and it does not look like it gets anybody. The Blizzard is just on car. Adam comes out with a tire and takes out a big pick on the enemy Lucio. And this fight is going to go into the favor of the Scarlet Hawks. Looks like the tanks are going to chase a little bit, but they're not going to commit too hard on it. They're going to back up. Adam t lobbing, lobbing nades from the left side. It's not building a lot of ult charge there, but it should be decent for something out. He sees that they're coming left. This this should be a good call from him. He's back. He backs out at a safe time. Viridian 
chases a little bit, but he is not able to to stay there for too long. McPherson takes out the shatter, but we low on, we beat on the low ground, so Love does not get the beat, which is fine because Scarlet Hawks end up taking the fight anyway by utilizing the advantage the, by everyone else utilizing the advantage from the beat. The only one really left are the tanks and the Lucio. Scarlet Hawks. Ooh, the beat comes out from the Lucio, but. It was during the. It was after they had already lost the fight, so now they don't have a have a beat for this last fight coming up. McPherson really needed to just lose that fight and save the beat for the upcoming fight that would have really helped their recontest. But now with only 10 seconds, they have only two players available with five seconds. They were not able to have a fight because they beat it to, and stayed in that fight for way too long. The Reaper teleports on the point. Does IIT call this? It looks like they don't, but the Reaper does not accomplish a lot. A Nano comes out onto Staple. The Tire gets three people, and it looks like this round is going to go in the favor of Scarlet Hawks. Only, uh, McPherson only capturing two points and not able to finish the whole map. McPherson really need to be careful about just dying on that last point quickly. They Before that beat was used, they still had about 30 seconds. That was more than enough time for them to just lose the fight and come back with the beat to help them in the last fight and try to take it over. But because they committed that beat, they not only wasted an ultimate, but they wasted their own time too, leaving only two people to fight during overtime. McPherson can't be making mistakes like that. They want to secure this series now let's see what we, we're gonna be running on both sides just in a second here so it looks like hmm it looks like mcpherson will be going for the rhine sigma not really a composition you see a lot in this meta but you also don't really see it on this point you do see it from time to time but you don't really see it on uh these more open points considering that it's raw um, like it, concerning it's less, uh, less brawly, but we'll see how, or sorry, not less brawly, but, uh, less, uh, versatile, but we'll see how this goes for McPherson. We'll see if they keep it for this first point. It looks like they're going to be running the Ana Moira too. So they're giving up the speed for more raw healing and the anti-nade. Another a widow coming out. Oh, the widow gets the Lucio from spawn. That's a very big pick. Could waste a little bit of time from Scarlet Hawks, but if they use the cart as cover properly, this should not affect them. They all decide to stage high ground to zone this widow, but no one is on the cart. That is a decent amount of cart progress wasted due to that. But uh, Viridian going on a hunt for the widow but he does not uh, he's not able to find her meanwhile scarlet hawks just pushing this point for free because uh mcpherson does not have a good rotation they rotate way too late as the card is already under and they're able to get picked off one by one there's no kinetics grasp from the sigma to keep him alive the reaper act though is able to just shred through the tanks but it does not matter because staple is still evening out with his with his wrecking ball he takes out the sigma and now he's looking to take out this reinhardt which he does McPherson has a fair amount of respawns, but without the tanks available right now, they can make a fair recontest. Love spots the Reaper on the right side, but the Reaper raids out to stay alive and regroup with his team. Will McPherson try to touch the point and contest it for the last fight? It doesn't look like they'll have time, but the Reaper jumps in last second using the Shadow Step. The Reaper gets an anti but he cleanses himself with the Wraith. The Immortality comes out from McPherson, but it comes out in a really weird spot that doesn't have a lot of utility. Staple gets two from the Pile Drive, and that should actually secure the fight already with most of their damage and their healing gone. The, the, the Sigma out after using Flux, and now the Widow is gonna just gonna, gonna get dove on. Or maybe she'll get out, actually. No, it looks like they're going to easy, easy commit on her. The Reaper comes out in a, uh, and actually takes out Viridian. He is able to just shred through the tanks. It's fine, though, because for Scarlet Hawks, they can just get back easily. Love out on the side, spamming people as they try to walk out of the choke. Will McPherson actually 
find that and commit on taking him out early. It looks like they really won't. It's kind of a good call from them because they don't want to be chasing a Hanzo who has lunge and all that. Um, oh, Moira ended up being very low. Scott, uh, McPherson, again, using the immortality really early for no reason. And the tire is going to end up taking out the Baptiste. The B comes out from Creative MBW and keeps him alive as... Viridian was really low. The, the dragon coming from the back line taking out the Reinhardt and looks like even though Scarlet Hawks you've used a lot of ultimates here They're going to end up taking this point Or this fight McPherson still has a few people they could uh, respawn and regroup really quickly But from the way it looks like it looks like no one was really in position to touch and stall for McPherson to actually get back So McPherson just setting up early for the second point or for the third point Viridian setting up on the high ground, cleaving to get that ult charge. He needs to get out as the Reaper can just shred him, which he does. Ooh, Staple commits way too hard on the enemy team. And with a Reaper and May existing, he's just a easily able to get just melted. Adam contests the high ground here. The Reaper teleports into him and gives up his own life to try to contest. Not sure why McPherson really went for that. A really good Dragons to split both to split the tank line uh, from the rest of the team for uh, from McPherson. The Immortality comes out in response to the pile drive. Not necessarily a good use of it, as he could have just used Shift or the right click to just to keep people alive in that. The Grav comes out from McPherson. And they, com they combo with the Blossom to get four people. McPherson is going to end up taking this fight. But they were very close to just giving it up with the with the waste of cooldowns that they had there. Scarlet Hawks is going to be uh, coming with this fight with a Nano, Primal, and a Tire. They could try to use this Tire early to draw out any resources. And then send a Nano Monkey in there to live. But then also just take out people but it looks like scarlet hawks are going to go, go for the primal first odd choice from them adam ends up getting frozen from the blizzard somehow actually that might have just been a combo from the blizzard and the primal fire from the May. but he ends up getting taken out but in exchange staple takes out the baptiste that's a lot of healing gone from the mcpherson bulldogs the nano comes out onto viridian and he is doing a lot of cleave damage he could build another primal just from that and, and he's gonna end up taking a lot of people along with the uh, with the help from Staple. The the air matrix coming out from uh, from Baptiste way too late, along with the immortality field. And Scarlet Hawks are just gonna take that point basically for free. Alright, so we are now on map 3 of Scarlet Hawks B versus the McPherson Bulldogs. Map 1. Going in the favor of McPherson Bulldogs. But map 2 going on going in the favor of Scarlet Hawks B. The score is currently tied up. We'll see how who will take the favor in this map.
we're going to see both teams running the Ryan and Zarya here. And both teams also electing to run the May. Both, uh, what do you call it, Tank Line and the May, a staple of uh, of King's Row. Even in this meta, you see a lot of Zarya being run on this map because the narrow corridors and the lack of high ground is very uh, beneficial for her as compared to a D.Va. Looks like McPherson are still going to be running the Moira instead of the Ana. Odd choice. It seems that they don't have a lot of sustain to actually keep their tanks alive with that the the dynamite coming from love uh actually does get a few people but the they're able to hard commit with the with the wall from adam and take out two people that's the tank and that's the may gone from mcpherson the rhine still commits even with two people down and just ends up dying scarlet hawks are going to peak this a little but they're not going to fully commit another dynamite coming out and ends up hitting the zarya and she uses the bubble to cleanse herself Scarlet Hawks are just going to poke this out a little bit, but Love gets taken out by the by a great shot from Exorcist. The wall comes out from Adam, but it's a little late, but it doesn't really matter because Staple is able to find the kill on the enemy main tank. So Staple getting taken out from that odd positioning, but the shatter comes out from Viridian, and even though it does not result in a lot of kills, it results in a very big kill onto the Lucio, and Moira commits a coalescence. Oh, why, McPherson? Why would you do this to yourself? You're you're committing ultimates into a lost fight. Oh, but actually, McPherson, oh, the, the wall slows down. McPherson's push from there, even though they take out the main tank, the the wall is able to stop the push, and the Bob comes out from Scarlet Hawks. And is able to uh, to able uh, able to slow down the push even more, and uh, the enemy Reinhardt on the side of McPherson is, is so low. The wall cuts him off from the beat, and they're not allowed to, uh, able to keep him alive. Love taking him out there. Now the Zarya is alone and taken out, but she takes out the uh, the Lucio with her. The, uh, the Zarya on the side of Scarlet Hawks A ends up going out too. But Viridian is kept alive from the Ana a Nano to keep him in the fight. A Shatter is used to secure the fight. Even though it was one person, it was honestly a very good Shatter just to make sure the fight stayed in their favor. The Bob comes out, takes out uh, Lugna on, in, uh, on his way out. And Love gets taken out. And again, for some reason, McPherson is... Is committing ultimates in a fight that is either lost or just isn't currently going on and it just keeps them it, it just keeps them uh, from actually securing a point but the blizzard is good at zoning out Scarlet Hawks that they get zoned out right into the graviton of Mc of McPherson and it looks like finally after very messy alt usage McPherson is actually going to be able to coordinate something and take the fight uh, for uh, and the point uh, for this attack. So McPherson will not be full health despite a lot of their mistakes. Scarlet Hawks though, they have a few ultimates here. They have two on hand and one coming up. They could try to go for the grab uh, blizzard combination uh, or just try to stagger the ultimates so that they can take this fight. But Viridian taken out from the shadow really early and McPherson is going to commit a dragon on that They're going to get zoned out from that and Agam is probably going to be taken out Creative gets out. She almost stayed there too long, but she's able to get out safely IIT just needs to look to regroup and contest this as a group McPherson decides Alexa keep two on cart pushing it farther and not not taking the full space, but they'll take a, a decent amount of it. For, currently, Scarlet has four people. They're going to use the graph here, and the beat comes out from from a person to keep them alive. But they no longer have an ultimate to keep them alive. The shatter comes out from Viridian, and it is big. But in the meantime, Exorcist takes out two people, so it's hard for Scarlet Hawks to follow up, especially considering they don't have a Lucio. But Staple comes out, takes out Exorcist, and the May is on point. But she's going to be able to live with the support of her team. And looks like McPherson is going to take this fight. The Nano comes out from Scarlet Hawks. Odd choice. It keeps Staple alive, but not for not for long. The 
Blizzard and the Bee come out. The Blizzard from the side of me first and the Bee from, Scar from the side of Scarlet Hawks come out. Weird alt usage considering it seemed like... On, weird old use from, from both sides, considering that it seemed like the fight was already in the favor of McPherson, but McPherson is going to end up securing that point, and they're, they're just going to try to push through this first corner. IIT just needs to contest, and Love does a great job of picking out the Lucio, so that stops their contesting power. The Bob comes out in tandem with the, with the Engage from Staple, and they use Blizzard, but... It, the blizzard is used way too far for anyone to actually commit onto it. E even with that, though, Adam is able to find a pick onto the enemy May. The dragon cuts off the team. Actually, it doesn't cut them off. It por forces them to the left side. The, the dragon doesn't cut them off properly, but rather forces them into one position. And they don't really commit uh, uh, capitalize on it for too long. The shatter comes out from Viridian the same time the grab comes out from McPherson. And Viridian is only able to secure one kill through that while McPherson gets two kills. The shatter comes out from McPherson too and the coalescence. So they're committing a lot of ultimates to actually secure this fight. They committed three different ultimates when they only really need to commit one or two. And McPherson is going to have only two ult or one ultimate really in this fight. Maybe two with the Blizzard or uh, or Dragon. While Scarlet Hawks is going to more likely have two or three. We'll see how they use this Nano here. The Hans on the high ground. Someone needs to be watching for that. It looks like Love has noticed and he's going to be doing the Hans right now. The, the beat comes up from the enemy Lucio. And at the same time, Scarlet Hawks use the Nano. I don't know about that timing. I would have waited just a little bit for that for that Nano. Just wait for the beat considering that they had used it way too early. For, uh, Staple going to pile drive in and use the bombs. Use the bombs on point. And uh, McPherson committing a lot of alts again. It looks like a lot of times McPherson starts to win a fight and they want to secure a fight but they are not coordinating what ultimate to use to actually secure that fight so they end up using a lot at once. Scarlet Hawk's going to keep stalling with the May and the ball. A huge anti comes out as Staples rolls through and Tekken lands the anti. A good beat from, from Creative to actually keep them in the fight and make use of the stall. Viridian on the Roadhog. Oh, and the and the grab comes out, and there's no beat to actually keep them alive. But Viridian hooks the May, very good hook from Viridian here. And the, the Blizzard comes out from Adam. Meanwhile, they the enemy team is forced to be on point. A big Blizzard from Adam, and the Reaper comes out too to just help follow up. The the Reaper does a lot of damage, and Staple is able to finish that off. McPherson really just needs to either die. Or get out, but they keep uh, they keep poking, and the Lucio dies, which ends up being a big stagger for them. Only 30 seconds left, and McPherson has no ultimates on hand. They will have a few coming up, but they have none ready. Meanwhile, Scarlet Hawks has two ready and uh, two ready on hand, and two two coming up. Oh, Staple actually gets the ultimate really fast and uses it right away. Cuts off some of the team, and the, with the uh. With the whole hog, there's a lot of follow follow up damage to actually just kill a bunch of people, and they just take that fight without McPherson being able to even touch the point. With that tech killer, they didn't even need to use his nano; he was able to save it. Things are looking very good for Scarlet Hawks here. They kept they they were able to stop the full touch, as they were smarter with their ultimates. McPherson over like consistently over committing ultimates to fights that they have already won or fights that they have lost or fights that they're not even involved in wait they if they want to actually take this fight or take this uh take this map and have a proper defense they're going to need to get a lot better on that Alright, so we have now a good look at the composition compositions <coughs> being run for both sides. Both teams will elect to run the, the Ryan Zarya along with the May, but Scarlet Hawks will look to run Love's signature Hanzo compared to the uh, Reaper on the side of McPherson. And McPherson will run the Baptiste Moira rather than the Ana Lucio. It seems like McPherson... Is not very comfortable on the Ana because 
a lot of times they want to run everything but the Ana, even though the Ana is very, very useful in this meta with the burst healing, the nano boost, the anti nades, and now the fact that they don't have a Lucio either makes it very hard for McPherson to disengage from a Maywall. And they have the immortality, but this new immortality isn't as good at keeping people alive. Scarlet Hawks are going to wall from the theater side and actually use the wall to get onto high ground. Weird use of the wall considering they could have just wrapped around right side, but it's fine honestly because they're able to contest the point in a very unique fashion and take out the Baptiste right away. That's a big source of healing and sustain gone from the side of McPherson. The Reaper comes out. A lot of damage is gone too. Scarlet Hawks can easily just commit on this. Oh, good wall comes to wall off the May and the Reinhardt and is able to take them out right away. Scarlet Hawks are going to secure this point in a very clean and quick fashion. Good rollout from the Scarlet Hawks. They didn't necessarily need to use the wall to get on the high ground there, but it did save them a little bit of time. And they were just able to quickly take the point and punish the fact that McPherson just gave them space for free and and, and with the early pick onto the Baptiste too that, that really helped Scarlet Hawks are going to decide to hold uh, by library and they have one on card right now McPherson going to switch to the D.Va and push onto this they get walled off, but the wall is way too far for it to actually even really do anything. So, a big waste from McPherson, but the Shatter comes out and gets all six people combo with the Dragon. And Baptiste isn't able to get up in time to actually drop the Immortality in a good place. And Scarlet Hawks are going to use two alts to take that fight. And they still have the Nano Boost on hand with the Beat, Grab, and Blizzard all very close. Three big ultimates. Uh, McPherson, on the other hand, has a Shatter and the Coalescence, uh, along with the Amp Matrix and the Blizzard, but the, they use the Coalescence really early, so they're not going to be able to find a lot of value from it. But with that said, Staple gets taken out, but it doesn't matter because Scarlet, they don't touch in time, and Scarlet Hawks just take the point for free. It doesn't even matter that McPherson t uses these ultimates. They use ultimates on a... They, on a fight that they were winning, but they had already lost a point. And so rather than doing that, they should have just kept con they should have just kept fighting the neutral. McPherson is going to regret that later on. They use a lot of ultimates there. When Scarlet Hawks, they didn't use any. They're, they have almost six coming up. That, they use the Blizzard here along with the Dragons. Weird combination. They could have just comboed the Grab Dragon considering that they have no defensive but it's going to do a good job of zoning people out. The grab comes in with the Ant Matrix. And McPherson has no immortality to keep them in that uh, alive in that grab. But IIT doesn't commit onto it fast enough. So they don't capitalize on it. And McPherson uses the Blossom along with the Coalescence to just turn the fight back in their favor. The Ant Matrix wasn't bad from Skull Queen. But because they got grabbed, they weren't able to utilize it properly. And so... Uh, and so McPherson actually forced to commit more ults to make sure that they stay in the fight. That's a little bit of a mistake from Scarlet Hawks because they didn't really commit onto the grab as soon as possible considering that there was no uh, immortality to keep them alive. The bomb comes up from this McPherson. The bee comes out to keep people alive from the bomb, but I don't think it was needed because everyone was behind the shield. A good freeze and kill onto the onto Lugnut and the, the the Ryan on the side of McPherson taken out but in exchange love is taken out from the Reaper but the boob comes up from from uh, from creative MBW and a big source of CC and damage is gone from the side of McPherson and oh the diva on the side of McPherson almost gets boobs but she's able to save herself with boosters the dragon comes out from love <coughs> ends up taking out the Reinhardt and this is looking very bad for McPherson but the the kill onto Adam comes out along with the blizzard and this should actually shift the uh, shift the tide in the favor of of the Bulldogs and they're actually able to stay in this fight but this is still looking very risky for them three and a half minutes left for Scarlet Hawks and they're only f four or five meters away from finishing the the map and securing it McPherson has a lot of alts coming here so they could probably win this next fight too but Scarlet Hawks if they just take this fight without using any ultimates they could just build ultimates and draw the enemy ultimates for the next fight 
Scarlet Hawks taken out, both supports taken out from Exorcist. Meanwhile, they commit the Blizzard for some reason. And although it frees a lot of people, they aren't really able to do much considering that they had to deal with the enemy Reaper. And Scarlet Hawks only committing one ultimate, but they, they end up losing the fight. I think Scarlet Hawks really just need to hold onto their ultimates and just take that fight with the neutral and, and just lose it as fast as possible because they just want, wanted to draw out the resources from McPherson. But Scarlet Hawks exchange one ult for one ult, so really it doesn't accomplish that much. The Diva Bomb coming out and she tries to be cheeky and push it off the ledge, but she doesn't do it enough. And so this, the bomb doesn't really do anything. The charge comes out from uh from viridian while the dragon is there and ends up taking out two people with the dragons oh mcpherson you have to be a lot more careful they use the they use the amp matrix to try to stop the push but they backed up way too far along with the boops and were not able to touch in time and much like dorado they just end up giving the point and in much of the same pa much of the same fashion so Scarlet Hawks, it looks like, in this series are going to be up 2-1. And we'll see how they will do in map 4. Alright everyone, welcome to map 4 of Scarlet Hawks B versus McPherson Bulldogs. Let's get started with this. Alright, for starting compositions, it looks like on defense, the Scarlet Hawks are electing to go with the Rhine Sigma. Interesting. Uh, the Analucio, and then a Torb Junkrat. Now, this is a very good anti-dive composition. The Sigma might have a little trouble considering he doesn't have a lot of mobility, but the Torb and the Junkrat will help out a lot. It's a very smart uh, placement of the turret on the attack of McFer on, sorry, on the side of McPherson, who is on the attacking team. It looks like we'll be seeing a more uh, meta composition with the Ryan Diva along with the May, and then we have a Junkrat, uh, Moira, and Lucio. Junkrat, a very good pick on this map. Alright, we'll see. Junkrat's just lobbing from, from the top side. They wall off to cut LOS, and looks like they're going to go mid. But IIT has a very good rotation here. Viridian charges in, and it might be a little risky. Adam goes down, but they trade out the Diva mech for it, along with the Reinhardt on McPherson side. So both tanks are gone, along with the Lucio there. Viridian just kind of swinging into the enemy team, taking out four people and he ends up taking out the mate too and then following up the uh, Moira is taken out baby diva ends up dying to the turret right before she gets her mech back so very good fight on the side of scarlet hawks b they're gonna end up with a shatter right here after that first fight which is really good in terms of ultimate advantage as uh 
McPherson is only really close to a coalescence. They try to go for the same strat again, but the shatter comes through and gets two people on the side of IIT. They co the uh, McPherson decides to coalesce after two people have died, though, so no, it wasn't really that useful. All that's really left is the supports, and the Reinhardt ends up going down, but the rest of Scarlet Hawks B is still there to just follow up on the damage and take out both supports. First and oh, the diva actually still contesting, and she might get demected. She does, which is very, very unfortunate for McPherson as now they're staggered. And as there's no environmental, uh, there's no place to jump off on this map, they're just gonna end up waiting for the diva mech to come back. Weird choice for McPherson. They should have just, you know, wanted to die. They're still gonna commit with this, and uh, the rock lands on the Lucio, I believe it was. Oh. McPherson's tank ends up getting doesn't peel back far enough and just ends up dying. The flux comes out from IIT and ends up taking out the Lucio, and that was a very good fight for IIT as they only had to utilize one ultimate from their bank and and just end up well, winning that fight. Now McPherson coming up here with uh with a lot of ults themselves, they almost have five ultimates. They're going to have three on hand right now. The Shatter is very close to coming up along with the uh, Diva Bomb. But, let's see. They're going to go for the same strat again. They're going to keep trying to play the same thing. Actually, they're going to change up a little. They're going to try to go from high ground. Both Junkrats use Tire at the same time. Adam using it at a weird spot considering he's kind of leaves himself a little exposed. But they trade out the Diva Mech for the Ana. That's somewhat of a more favorable trade for uh, for uh, sorry, McPherson. But the shatter comes out from Viridian, which shuts down the mail from McPherson. A big shatter, but there, a lot of trades are going on here right now. IIT really needs to secure a few kills to make sure that they stay in this. But a, a, a multicore comes out from McPherson, which ends up making sure, uh, zoning them off the point, and it does a lot of damage to the Reinhardt. And both tanks are staying alive. McPherson elects to use the Diva Bomb while there are a lot of people down with a response coming in from IIT and that's an ult that they could have easily saved for the next for the next push and uh just a big mistake from McPherson now we have a soldier on both sides that was there from contest Viridian gets back right as McPherson is touching the point McPherson's uh Lugnaut uh, uh the enemy Reinhardt is getting really low can IIT actually come in off to this killer it looks like they will Viridian takes him out along with Staple. Oh, sorry, Staple taking out along, along with Viridian taking out the Moira. A lot of kills going in the favor of IIT, and now McPherson only has 17 seconds left. This is looking very risky for McPherson. They're gonna have to able to touch this point, or be able to touch this point. They only have five seconds. Do they really even have anyone in position to touch? The only person that can really touch is the Diva, and she flies on just before she gets caught in the flux and still ends up with a touch but a big shatter comes up from viridian and in the end he's able to take out a lot of people very good hold from iit only giving up one tick they had very good ultimate usage McPherson, a, a very common mistake we've been seeing from them is just not giving up a fight on time. Ended up staggering a lot of their, uh, ended up staggering themselves a lot and utilizing ultimates on fight loss. And they they showed that time and time again in in this uh in this attack of theirs. And that really is going to end up costing them a series if they keep doing this. If IIT takes this uh take this takes this uh first tick. Uh, and a little bit extra, they're going to end up winning the series. McPherson came out really strong in the first map, but they've been making a, a lot of mistakes, a lot of the same mistakes consistently, which has led them in this situation. Now, can they really clean up their act and uh, and, and, and try to secure this uh, this map? They, they do technically have a win condition, considering that they actually got a tick, but whether or not they can actually make use of that condition, we'll, we'll have to see. So it looks like we're going to have the Ryan Zarya from IIT along with Asambra, something that we haven't really seen uh, seen them pull out this whole series. But it, it is something that Love tries, uh, ha likes to keep in his pocket and pull out from time to time. McPherson going to run the Bat Sigma again along with a Ash Reaper. Not necessarily sure if we've seen that exact lineup, but we have seen those two DPS before uh, from these players. Again, running the Moira in this in this situation seems very odd to me, considering you don't have a lot of the utility and the uh, the burst healing 
compared to an Ana. If anything, I kind of expect Bat Lucio, but you know, we'll see how that goes. Sean is going, or sorry, McFly is going to scout out the point and try to call out where positions are. Uh, it going to go from the Mega Room. Looks like they're going to skirmish here for a little bit before pushing out. Right now, there's a lot of poking going on uh, from from both sides. There's a hack onto the uh, onto Exorcist, but there's no kill followed up with that. Oh, meanwhile, McFly is securing the point, but uh, EO11 ends up going to, to contest the point. But the enemy Moira is actually taken out in the meantime. But in return, McPherson actually trades out the Lucio and the Reinhardt, which is not a favorable trade for IIT. And they're going to have to end up giving this, this, this fight up. It looks like they are trying to back up. McPherson decides not to chase and get more stagger kills. Something that could be problematic later on, but we'll see how that ends up faring for them. McLove coming up with the EMP here. All they really, if they can combo, if they can utilize that all easily, uh, well, they can easily gather the point. IIT has a lot of ults coming up. McPherson has a few uh, there too, but IIT is at 98 or at 100 for almost. For, for most of their alts, the shatter comes out and it gets like two or three people. The immortality is out from Loveless, but we really don't, uh, it really doesn't do a lot as people are knocked off the point. The Nana comes out, which should secure a few kills. The, the tire comes out too. And I think at the end, IT is just going to take this point. And with that, they'll take the series. IT wins against McPherson 3 1.